Good morning, children. I am so happy and excited to invite all students of grade 11 and to draw your attention towards today's English video class. I hope this is your first video class on English. What you are going to learn in today's video class, do you know children? Yeah, the first chapter of the textbook Hornbill. Actually, this is the textbook prescribed, see the Hornbill. Can you see it clearly children? Actually, this is the textbook prescribed by CBC board that is NCRT for English score for class 11th. This text is consisting of 8 prose lessons and 5 poems together. And you are going to learn <coughs> in detail the first chapter of this text. In today's video class, you are going to learn in detail the first chapter of this text entitled The Portrait of a Lady. The author, the narrator of this lesson is the great Guswan Singh. Yeah, I know, I hope everyone in this world, everyone on this earth, likes and loves their grandparents, no doubt. Similarly, grandparents also in turn love their grandchildren. Love between grandparents and grandchildren is unique and unconditional. Like everyone, the narrator, the writer of this lesson also had his grandparents. He describes vividly how he had spent his childhood with her in the village. Okay, fine. A few words about the writer of this lesson, the Guswan Singh. Actually, children, Guswan Singh was an Indian novelist. Guswan Singh was an Indian novelist, a lawyer, a journalist, and he was also a parliamentarian. And uh, do you know where he was educated? Actually, he was educated at Government College of Lahore and he continued his college studies in King's College and then he continued his studies in Cambridge University. He also had his college education at the Inner Temple in London. He was one of the India's leading writers and columnists. He is known for his secularism humor and a deep passion for poetry. Anyone can find all these things in his writings. He was honored, do you know children? He was honored with the Badma Bhushan by the President of India. His book, A History of the Sikhs, his book, A History of the Sikhs is regarded as the most authoritative work on the Sikhs history. Okay, about uh, this lesson. I hope all of you know something about the author, the narrator of this lesson. Okay, next, let me explain in detail, in a nutshell, about the lesson. In this story, Guswar Singh draws a pen picture of his grandmother. See, here you can see, this is Guswar Singh's the portrait of a lady, an old lady. She was none other than our narrator Guswan Singh's grandmother is a pen picture actually in this story Guswan Singh draws a pen picture in the means he is drawing portrait of his grandmother he spent most of his childhood days with his grandmother only okay so Guswan Singh has portrayed his grandmother as tender loving and a deeply religious old lady. So like others, Guswan Singh also had his own grandma, grandmother, and he has portrayed and draws a pen picture of his grandmother, and he portrayed her as tender, loving, and a deeply religious old lady. And more than that, the portrait of a lady has been taken this lesson, the portrait of a lady, has been taken from Guswan Singh's book, 
the mark of vishnu and other stories in this extract the author draws a pen portrait of his grandmother who was actually his uh, companion guardian friend and caretaker see so based on the good and noble characters of his grandmother he draws a pen picture that's called a portrait so to him the author loves his grandmother from the bottom of his heart like everyone the writer gusman singh loves his grandmother from the bottom of his heart so in this extract the author draws a pen picture who was actually his companion his grandmother was a good companion she was yeah guardian she was a yeah, good friend and she was a yeah, caretaker of our narrator so based on this noble qualities of his grandmother he draws a pen picture that was the title of this lesson the portrait of a lady okay and then a good portrait not only brings out the physical features of a person portrait brings out not only the physical features but also reflects the intellectual and spiritual beauty of the subject a lady is the most dignified title a lady is a woman who possesses charm grace and dignity a lady is the one who possesses charm a lady is the one who possesses charm grace crazy as well as dignity a woman with all these characters a woman with all these noble qualities can be rightly called as lady therefore the portrait of a lady is a suitable title given to the given to his grandmother by guswan singh so all these attributes abound in grandmother's personality okay children now you know something about the writer and i have given a brief outline of this story that is about the lesson so this portrait of a lady has been taken you don't forget children it has been taken from guswan singh's book the mark of vishnu and other stories so in and out full and full he describes vividly his early childhood days with his grandma and he glorifies the noble qualities of his grandmother throughout this lesson shall we go to this lesson children yeah see the author's grandmother like others the narrator also had his own grandmother so i hope all of you have your textbook turn to the page number 5 the first lesson the portrait of a lady my grandmother like everybody's grandmother the narrator says was an old woman so like others the narrator also had his own grandmother she was an old woman how was she how was she looked like she she had been old and wrinkled for 20 years that i had known her so the writer the narrator has known her for 20 years she was an old woman her face was wrinkled what do you mean by wrinkled actually wrinkled means lines which forms on someone's face as they grow old see actually there are the lines which form lines which form on someone's face which form on someone's face as they grow old as they grow old okay so like others narrator guswan singh also had his own grandmother she was an old woman he had known her for 20 years and her face was wrinkled wrinkled means lines which form on someone's face as they grow old 
For 20 years, the other had known his grandmother. She had been the same terribly old lady for all these 20 years. But people know, told him that she had once been young and pretty and had even had a husband. But the known people told Guswan Singh that uh, now your grandmother may be old, but when she was young, she was so pretty and she was so beautiful at the time. And she had had her own husband. People told him like that. But what happens? It was very difficult for a narrator to believe that once she was too young and pretty like other women. Because for more than 20 years, he had known her as an old lady. He could not believe that she had even had a husband also. A picture of the... Uh, so this is the way he had been told by others. So, and a picture of father's grandfather hung in the drawing room. Like this, you see. As I, as I have shown you the picture of uh, Guswan Singh's grandmother. See? Old lady and pious personality. She was known for her love, passion and uh, so many noble qualities uh, she had uh, with her. And this is the picture, portrait of Guswan Singh's uh, grandfather. See, a picture of father's grandfather hung in the drawing room. His grandfather looked uh, very old. He had a long white beard. He wore a big turban. He wore a big turban. His clothes were actually loose fittings. So this was a portrait of Arthur's grandfather hung in the drawing room. His grandfather looked very old. He had a long white beard. He wore a big turban. His clothes were loose fitting. Okay. So here he wore a big turban and loose fitting clothes. His long white beard covered the best part of his chest and looked at least a hundred years old. Actually, to the other, his grandfather did not seem like a man who could have a wife and children, but someone who could have lots of, lots and lots of grandchildren. What nice it is. He looked at least a hundred years old. He did not look the sort of a person who would have a wife or children. Actually, to the writer, to the narrator, his grandfather did not seem like a man who could have a wife and children. But how then, how he appeared to writer, someone who could have lots and lots of grandchildren. Then, okay, then the narrator's grandmother was very old and wrinkled as I told you already. She had stayed at his stage for the last 20 years. People said that once she was young and pretty, the narrator couldn't even imagine her being young. That's very important. His grandfather also very old. The thought was almost revolting. When the people told him, grandmother being young and pretty, the thought was almost revolting. Here revolting means he was not in a position to accept it. He was not in a position to accept it. It was very difficult for him to accept it. Actually, the very idea, revolting means it was very hard for the other to believe. The idea was very unpleasant. When people told Guswan Singh once your grandmother was very beautiful, very young and she had her own husband, he couldn't digest such things. He was not in a position to accept, to believe. The idea was very unpleasant. And more than that, when Guswan Singh was young, her grandmother often told us of the games she used to play as a child. She vividly narrated Guswan Singh and his cousins. Guswan Singh's grandmother vividly narrated him as well as his cousin what all the games she used to play when she was young. That seemed quite absurd and undignified on the part and we treated it like fables of the prophets she used to tell us. But what happens? Guswan Singh's grandmother was a short lady. She was fat and slightly bent. Therefore, and more than that, the stories about the childhood games were like fairy tales to him. The narrator's grandmother 
was a never attractive woman so her uh, all the stories she has narrated seems to him as a the fairy tales no, normally it is not uh, real story fairy tales are not real story it was purely an imaginary stories so to him all the stories narrated by his grandmother and the games she used to, to play when she was young were like the fairy tales told by the prophets out of pure imagination okay and fables of the prophets more than that she had always been short and fat and slightly bent in this paragraph the second paragraph the writer explained her personal appearance the narrator's grandmother was never an attractive woman physically why why the writer says like this because see yeah, she was very short and uh, she had a divine beauty in her see she had always been short and fat and slightly bent her face was criss cross of wrinkles running from everywhere to everywhere see why the writer says like this she put down and see and how she walked all these things had been explained by the writer she was very short and fat and slightly bent stooped her face was also criss cross it means the lines which is generally formed on someone's face as they grow bold and these lines were running on the face of her grandmother from one place to another place that is from everywhere to everywhere so we were certain she had always been as we had known old and the writer says she was terribly old she could not have even old and no chance for her became older because already she had been very old okay therefore her stories looked quite funny she looked childish the narrator didn't take them very seriously that's the thing okay the narrator's grandmother never been an attractive woman physically no chance for it but she had a divine beauty in her she always used to wear spotless white clothes the grandmother was always dressed in spotless white she had silvery hair her white locks spread untidily over her pale and wrinkled face she looked like an expanse of pure white serenity the writer here compass when all the white hairs just to falls logs spread untidily on her wrinkled face pale face it looks she looked like an expanse of pure white serenity the stretch of snow over the mountains looks equally white and peaceful so her silvery locks and white dress made her look like the winter landscape in the mountains here let me explain it in detail children during the winter time if you look at the cliffs of the mountain or the cap of the mountains you can see the snow falls and the thick frost covered so at that time the total landscape will be looking like white so in the same way the white and the gray hair and tidily falls spread over her pale and wrinkled face and she was also in pure white dress with all this white dress and the spreading of the white hair locks of white hair until over her face made her to look like the winter landscape in the mountains see the comparison is very important the writer guswan singh he describes how his grandmother looks like when white hairs falls here and there untidy white hairs falls on her face and she was looking so bright with her white dress with her white dress she was always but he couldn't understand she couldn't believe she was beautiful okay but at the same time with her white dress and uh, uncombed hair white hairs locks spread untidily over her pale and wrinkled face at that time she looked 
like an expanse of pure white serenity during the winter time if you go and if you look at the mountain or the hill slope or on the cape of the hills or top of the hills the entire hill mountain is covered with snow falling it looks so bright everywhere you can see the white layer of the snow fall in the same manner this lady in her white dress and locks of white hair falls on the spread on the face looks like winter landscape in the mountains winter landscape in the mountain her spotless white dress and silver white hair made her look like the snowy mountains that is important snowy mountains during the winter times you can see snowy mountains in winters she appeared to be an expanse of spotless whiteness spotless whiteness actually here the poet says she was not beautiful but what he says she was she had a spiritual beauty actually her noble qualities gave her a spiritual beauty she put one hand how she walked next to the point the writer describes the way of her walking seen she put one hand on her waist to support the stoop she could not walk even straight she walked like a lame person she limped on hobbled about while moving so she put one hand just on her waist to support the stoop she could not walk straight even straight she walked like a lame person she limped or hobbled about while moving hobbled okay she she was a deeply religious lady her lips were always moving in a silent prayer she was always telling the beads of her rosary in the picture in the portrait you can see she holding the rosary in her hand her ma- her lips keeps telling the prayer while enchanting the prayers her fingers just rolls the beads of the rosary okay beads of the rosary see this picture very clearly it gives you the nature of that lady how pious she is and how deeply she is a religious lady her lips were always moving in a silent prayer she was always telling the beads of her rosary her encha her lips enchants the prayer the other and his grandmother were good friends see actually you should note one thing <coughs> so she was not able to walk properly how she walked the other his grand did not seem like a man see so grandmother was very old and wrinkled she had stayed at his stage for the last 20 years so her spotless white dress so many things she has in the other narrated his parents she was deeply religious lady her lips were always moving in a silent prayer she was always telling the beads of her rosary so fine so till in the second paragraph the writer describes the personal appearance how she was how she looked like so she was an old lady she had a wrinkled face and he had known her for more than 20 years and she had been with her in the village and more than that she was looking like a very old lady terribly old lady and when people told the narrator about his grandmother when she was young she was beautiful but he was not in a position to believe all such things because he knew he had known her for more than 20 years therefore it was very difficult for him to accept the truth that he was very young when she was uh, uh, when she was very beautiful when she was young and she had had her husband also his grandfather was no more he was also very old and he had a, a long white beard and he used to wear the turban also uh, so and more than that how she walked that also the narrator explained she was not able to walk properly and due to her limp she put one hand on her waist to support the stoop she could not walk even straight she walked like 
a lame person she limped or hobbled about while moving and uh, she uh, he also this the writer also described uh, how pious to personality his grandmother was she was actually very religious lady her lips were always uh, moving in a silent prayer she was always telling the beads of her rosary to define the character of this old lady the writer used the following words see character sketch character sketch of this narrator's grandmother he has used the following words to describe the character sketch of his grandmother she was short she was fat she used to bend to stoop towards the front when she used to, to walk she had wrinkled face and she was very calm and quiet she was kind so she was short she was fat she used to bend stooping while walking she had wrinkled face she was very calm and quiet she was kind and then the remaining characters she was passionate she was very tender she was loving she was charm she was grace she was known for her dignity and even at the old age she was very beautiful serene old and hobbled so all these words has been used by the narrator to describe the character sketch of his grandmother besides he also used some other words let me present all these words one by one children her grandmother in her white dress looked pretty and she was very much considerate she was very much see the considerate and she was very much affectionate she loves her grandchildren very much and she was a lady of pious personality and she was very silent and see she was very strong morally she was very strong and she had known for her punctuality and she was a disciplined lady and she was very precise in everything so these are all the words which were used by the narrator to describe eh? actually the character sketch of this old lady and eh, see the narrator his grandmother always take care of uh, guswan singh when he was young so guswan singh's grandparents was actually she was a short lady as being fat and slightly bent she could not walk straight so she hobbled about the house she had to keep one hand on her waist it was to to balance her stoop in the other she held a rosary on the other hand she held a rosary she was always telling the beads it means her lips constantly moved in prayer she put on white clothes her silver locks scattered over her pale face she looked like snowy mountain in winter she looked the same for the last 20 years perhaps she could not have looked to old no chance she looked the same for the last 20 years so these descriptions were effectively made by the guswan singh to describe his grandmother's personality and he also says that the author's grandmother was a person strong in character she was a strong woman with strong beliefs although she was not formally educated she was serious about the author's education how let me explain see the very important places when he was a child when the writer was a child the author and his grandmother were good friends his parents went to city they left him with her in the village she took good care of him she used to wake him up and get him ready for school she said her prayer 
while she bathed and dressed him in the hope that her grandson would know them by heart see this paragraph my grandmother and i were good friends when the writer was in the village both of them were good friends the writer says and the guswan singh's parents left him with her when they went to live in the city and they were constantly together he was with his grandmother she used to wake him up in the morning and get him ready for the school and more than that what she used to say she set her morning prayer in a monotonous sing song see she she used to enchant the prayer with the hope that her grandson would know them by heart but what happened actually that i would listen and get to know it by heart i listen because i loved her voice but the poet but the writer the narrator listen to her prayer because he loved that old lady's voice his grandmother voice very much but he never bothered to learn it he not paid attention to the meaning of such things then she would fetch my wooden slate which she had already washed and plastered with yellow chalk a tiny earthen ink pot and a red pen tie them all in a bundle and hand it to me okay so guswan singh listened to the prayers because he loved her voice but never bothered to learn them then she would fetch his wooden slate she had already washed it and she tied it up with yellow chalk she would take an earthen ink pot and a red pen she would tie them in a bundle and hand it to his grandson she would give him a thick slate chapati with a little butter and sugar spread on it it was his breakfast she carried several stale chapati with her for the village dogs also so in this way she took care of his grandson so in the early morning she used to wake him up she was seen she during childhood the narrator stayed with his grandmother in the village she was his constant companion that's very important she looked after him she used to wake him up she got him ready for school in the morning see she would give him breakfast she went to school with him always she uh, his grandmother always went to school with him the school was attached to the temple the priest taught children the alphabet and the morning prayer the children sat in two rows in the veranda they would sing the alphabet or the prayer in a chorus voice the grandmother sat inside the temple she would read holy books that is the scriptures then they would walk home together the village dogs would gather at the temple door they feed the street dogs with the stale chapati see let me read the lines from the text and explain my grandmother always went to school with me so the grandmother accompanied him when he was about to move to school because the school was attached to the temple okay so you know that children whenever you are a young child now you are in 11th standard when you are in first standard or second standard your parents also helped you in such a way they gave a bath to you and they feed you with their breakfast and they keep the things needed for to take with you to the school and uh, so they accompanied you and they drop you at the school evening the parents come to pick up you from the school so all these things happened all these things so evening parents accompany you to pick up you from the school in the same way when the narrator was young his grandma helped him in all such a way so his grandmother gave him a pot she woke him up in the early morning and she kept ready all the things he needed for to take to school okay and she fed him breakfast with stale chapati and she kept some chapati also to carry with her for the village dogs so his grandmother always went to school with him because the school was attached to the temple the priest there in the school taught the narrator and all other children the alphabet and the morning prayer these two things our narrator guswan singh learned in the school 
while the children sat in rows on either side of the veranda they used to, to sing the alphabet or the prayer in chorus voice okay my grandmother sat inside reading at the time what she was doing she just went and sat inside the temple and she there she was reading scriptures the holy books when we had both finished we would walk back together so after the school hours when the school gets over in the evening time she took his her grandson to home both of them used to come back to home from the school together his grandmother always went to school with him the school was attached to the temple and in the evening time the grandmas evening time they would walk home together the village dogs also followed them so the old lady feed the village dogs with stale chapatis okay see the village dogs would meet us at the temple door they followed us to our home growling and fighting with each other for the chapatis we threw to them when my parents were comfortably settled in the city so she helped him in his lessons also it was her domain and she was the queen of her kingdom in this period she was the stool unchallenged guardian mentor and creator of the child guswan singh okay so so this uh, he now uh, briefly vividly describes his life when he was a child with his uh, grandmother in the village so when he was left at the care of his grandmother by their parents they went and settled in the city so he was uh, taken care of by his grandmother she used to take him up from his uh, bed and she gave him a bath and she dressed him up also and she used to to enchant prayers with the hope that his uh, grandson also learned and by heart it and uh, she provided him with the breakfast chapatis and then she accompanied him to the school there he learned the basic things he was taught by his uh, priest in the school at that time she was in the temple and she used to read the scriptures the holy books in the evening she accompanied her grandson when both of them were coming back to the home the village dogs also followed them she never failed to feed the dogs the stale chapati okay so these things happened so here what the writer says it was her domain when he spent his early childhood days with his grandmother in the village she was the queen of her kingdom she never allowed anyone to come and take care of guswan singh in this period she was a soul unchallenged guardian mentor and a creator of the child guswan singh okay so there was a sudden turning point when my parents were comfortably settled <coughs> in the city they sent for us so turning point the turning point came in their relationship when they came to the city to stay with guswan singh's parents in the city guswan singh joined an english school and started to go to school in a motor bus his grandmother no longer went to school with him since there were no dogs in the city grandmother took to feeding the sparrows see when my parents were comfortably settled in the city they sent for us there was a turning point in their friendship although we shared the same room my grandmother no longer came to school with me she cannot go with her grandson to the school because it was an english medium school it was not like one she accompanied him in the village school my grandmother no longer came to school with me i used to go to an english school in a motor bus and more than that she couldn't find any dogs to feed what once she had in the village and here so she changed her attitude now she has decided to feed the birds with thrills okay fine so 
there are no dogs in the village feeding the sparrows in the courtyard of our city house though both of them were in the same room she could not accompany him to schools he was learning english and she could not help him in his lessons also because arithmetic principle he now he started to learn english law of gravity arithmetic principle and many more such things which she could not understand and this made her unhappy okay very important so in the village school when he attended the village school there guswan singh was taught the basic alphabets and then the devotional songs and other things were taught in alphabet and more than that um chorus scriptures and the prayer so all these things were taught to him and he was helped by his grandma she helped his grandson in his studies also but when they came and settled in the city she can't help him any more because in the city the subject which were taught to his her grandson was totally different there he was taught english and uh, other subjects also he learned law of gravity archimedes principles that is science and many more such things which she could not understand and uh, this made her so unhappy one more thing which disturbed her a lot was that the kids were not learning about god and scriptures in the school there were no scope for teaching gods about the god and the scriptures were not taught to the children in the city schools and in the city schools they gave prior importance to science language mathematics and other life oriented subjects they pay their good attention to teach all these things to the children so she was not in a position the guswan singh's grandmother was not in a position to help her grandson in his studies all these things were not known to her and more than that she was very much annoyed about not teaching the children the scriptures and uh, the subjects on god that disturbed her a lot kids were not learning about god and the scriptures in the school but she expected such things from the school management she wants even in the city side also the students might have been taught something about the creator of this universe students must know about the god and they should learn the scriptures also so these things were expectations of guswan singh's grandmother and scriptures in the school instead they were given music lessons which was not an honorable thing in her opinion but in the city schools the children were taught music it played an important role in the life of the city children but uh, grandmother she was not in a position to accept she considered it was not an honorable thing in her opinion to her music was not meant for gentle folk music was not meant for gentle folk it was meant for beggars and prostitutes only that was her opinion she was under the impression that old lady was under the impression that music was not an important one for a person for a student in his curriculum and it was uh, not a healthy habits to teach music to the children and to her it was meant for it was not meant for gentle folk but it was meant for beggars and prostitutes okay so to uh, the remaining things i would like to continue in the next video class before that children just uh, let me sum up what you have learned in today's class like other the narrator also had his own grandmother she was an old woman her face was wrinkled and for 20 years the other had known his grandmother she had been the same terribly old lady for the last 20 years it was difficult for him to believe that once she too was young and pretty like other women he could not believe that she had been she had even had a husband 
and then a picture of father's grandfather also hung in the drawing room his grandfather looked very old he had a long white beard he wore a big turban his clothes were loose fitting to the other his grandfather did not seem like a man who could have a wife and children but someone who could who could have lots and lots of grandchildren that much he was old the narrator's grandmother was very old and wrinkled she had stayed at the stage for the last 20 years and the people's opinion about his brightness when she was young the thought was almost revolting it was disgusting to think so and she used to narrate the stories when the gusman singh was young the stories about the her childhood games and other stories were like fairy tales to him and imagine they were purely imaginary stories no one can believe it so gusman singh's grandmother was a short lady she was fat and slightly bent the narrator's grandmother was never an attractive woman physically but she had a divine beauty in her the word is very important she always used to wear spotless white clothes the grandmother was always dressed in spotless white she had silvery hair her white hair locks spread untidily over her pale and wrinkled face she looked like an expanse of pure white serenity the stretch of snow over the mountain looks equally white and beautiful peaceful so her silvery locks and white dress made her look like the winter landscape in the mountain her spotless white dress and silvery white hair made her look like the snowy mountains in the winter and uh, actually her noble qualities give her a spiritual beauty she put one hand on her waist to support the stoops she could not walk even straight she walked like a lame person she limped or hopped about while moving like this she was uh, a deeply religious lady her lips were always moving in a silent prayer she was always telling the beads of her rosary when she used to enchant the prayers she rolls down the beads gently and started to count it the other and his grandmother were good friends his parents went to the city they left him with her in the village she took good care of him she used to wake him up and get him ready for school she said her prayer while she pathed and addressed to him in the hope that her grandson would know them by heart gusman singh listened to the prayers because he loved her voice very much but never bothered to learn them then she would fetch his wooden slate she had always washed it and give it to him besides the slate she also collected some other things which he needs for to use in the schools and she bundled it like yellow chalk earth and ink pot and reed, reed pen everything she bundled it and she gave it to her grandson she would tie them in a bundle and hand it to him she would give him a thick slate chapati with little butter and sugar it was his breakfast she carried several stale chapatis with her for the village dogs his grandmother always went to school with him the school was attached to the temple the priest taught children the alphabet and the morning prayer the children sat in two rows in the veranda they would sing the alphabet or the prayer in a chorus the grandmother sat inside the temple she would read holy books that is scriptures then they would walk home together the village dogs would gather at the temple door they feed street dogs with stale chapati she helped him in his lessons also it was his domain and she was the queen of her kingdom in this period when she was there with her grandson in the village she was the sole unchallenged guardian mentor and a creator of the child of good suddenly a turning point in her relationship the turning point came in the relationship when they came to the city to stay with gusman singh's parents in the city gusman singh joined an english medium school and started to go to school in a motor bus his grandmother no longer went to school with him since there was no dogs in the city grandmother took to feeding the sparrows she could not help him in his lessons also because he was learning english science that is law of gravity archimedes principle and many more things which she could not understand and this made her so unhappy 
one more thing which disturbed her a lot was that the kids were not learning about god and the scriptures in the school instead they were given music lessons which was not unhonorable things in her opinion which is to her music was not meant for gentle folk it was meant for beggars and prostitutes only okay children so so far now you have learned the good relationship which was existing between gusman singh and his grandmother when he was in his village and how was she how she looked like gusman singh opinion about his grandmother all these things were vividly narrated by gusman singh and the remaining things how she, he moved with her grandmother when he used to go for higher studies all these things i will explain you in the next video class till that you do one thing children just to go through all the past see all the paragraphs see up to the page number 4 so till the bottom at the end of the bottom just to go through the first page as well as the third and fourth page so so far now what i taught you is covered in these two pages read word by word line by line try to comprehend try to understand even if you have any doubts you just underline and you can we will have a discussion over all these things in due course and by the by at the end of this video class you will have a worksheet children in these worksheets some basic questions you will have try to answer all these questions okay it will help you to understand this lesson properly thank you children have a nice day